Hello and welcome to this very special episode where we're linking up Help I Sex and My Boss with Red Handed, two podcasts that are united. We're William and Jordan from Help I Sex and My Boss. Hello to you. We're Hannah and Saruti from Red Handed. And welcome to our lovely studio. It's lovely it is very lovely, here. do you know? It we is. share one with loads of people. So whenever oh. we come in, everyone's on plug shit and it's just a nightmare. But this is lovely. No, this get is. your own. <laughs> and we're working on it. Yeah, okay. We should start as well by saying, sorry that I'm late. <laughs> <laughs> We were thought the crime that we were going to be solving today was <laughs> the mystery of the disappearance of Jordan North, um, which Will would have worked with the vibe. William's yeah. very used to it. Also, I should apologise <laughs> for moving this back four times. Is it now we That's changed? That's absolutely fine. We, we are excited to be here. We're particularly enjoying all of the real plants that you guys have. Well, thank you so much. Just yes. to yeah. Yeah. point a fresh delivery. <laughs> We were explaining there's a certain demographic of our audience that hated our fake plants. Yes. They are correct. But yeah. that's, a, that's a snake plant there. Or is it a spider plant? Uh, snake. Yeah, snake. snake. And I've got one of them at home and I've killed it. because. Okay, a... can I just say, when Tony, our, our plant gay, delivered that... <laughs> Don't call him the plant gay. <laughs> he said they are indestructible. That's what I was going to say. Uh, well, so the fact you killed it gives me... What Great did you hope. do to it? Burn I think it. I've overwatered it because oh. oh. they're not—they're not really meant to be watered. How no often did you water? Every week. That's what he said for us to do. Oh well, how some, much though? Uh, just like a jug. A jug? Yeah, I'm not how very good. How big your jug? <laughs> I didn't. How big are your jugs? Like a milk jug? <laughs> an ironing jug? It, and that it was like um, a chamber pot. One oh. of those plastic ones you use for <laughs> for ironing. A goggle oh, jug. Right. Oh right, okay. Yeah, oh, right. it's, it's like a Pyrex right. one, but same same set but plastic. Plastic Pyrex, lovely. <laughs> yeah, anyway. Yes. And I've just got back off a stag do, but anyway. Oh, no. I want to hear about the stag do. Are you allowed to talk about it? I, no. <laughs> it, was, it was very good. We all, we all had a lovely time. Good. And that's yeah. the story. Mm. Girls, t do you like girls? How, how would you yes. identify? Whatever you, you like. Yeah, Ma'am. Okay. Ma Madam. 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 Oh, Madam. Ma Madam. Madam. <laughs> Tell us, what is Red Handed about? <laughs> well, we are a true crime podcast um, hosted by the two of us. Um, we don't know how long we've been running. We were trying to figure that out before we started recording mm. and it's somewhere between six and 13 years. Yeah. <laughs> we don't know. Oh, wow. <laughs> Wow. No, no, no. I always used to say seven years, but then I feel like I was saying seven years for about four years. So yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's like when you get to a certain age and you've just been that age for a really long time. Yeah, yes. still 27. Yeah. So like, like it's Jordan. Been... <laughs> True. And his media age. Yeah. So Red Handed has been running for some length of time. And we are a weekly true crime podcast. And every single week we do a different case on the show. Mm -hmm. um, and we don't stick to British cases just because we are British. We go all over the world. And we've done quite the range we've done things from kind of uh voodoo murders to yeah. alleged child sacrifice cases oh, to God. incest hillbilly sex cults we've done a few of those um we've done political assassinations we've done kind of current cases so we did cover lucy letby for example mm. and also um celebrity sickos so we've done jimmy savile and Ian Watkins, not the guy from Steps. No, no. the other one the other yeah. from Lost yeah. Profits. Famously not Just to be clear. No. Um, and we also do Shorthand, which is on Tuesdays, which mm -hmm. is an Amazon exclusive, um, about stuff that we think is interesting, like when NASA wanked off a dolphin. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry? NASA wanked off a dolphin. Don't you know about episode this? Episode one. No, I don't. Well, episode <laughs> one of Shorthand, produced by Red Handed, will tell you all about it, exclusive on Amazon Music. That sounds like a dilemma we get sent to. <laughs> yes. should, should I wank off a dolphin? Help, I wanked off a dolphin. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's the episode title. There yeah. we go. Yeah, there are definitely. actually some pretty good documentaries out there mm. on that topic. on yes. that topic. But you should listen to our shorthand first, and uh, then yes. go watch. Yeah, the nothing will be as good as that. Yeah. No. And right back at you. Can you explain for red-handed mm -hmm. listeners who found their way here mm. what what your not sex sex podcast is? Yes, I will, I will We're say not a sex for audio only listeners. Directly in my eye line <laughs> is um, a cloner Willy mm -hmm. kit. Yep. Um, and it says vibrating at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, just in case yes. anyone was worried that it didn't vibrate, it mm -hmm. does. This is brilliant. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're not a sex podcast. <laughs> we are a podcast that likes to help people with modern day problems and dilemmas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And over the years, seven years now, is it? No, six and a bit. Six and a bit years <laughs> that we've been doing it. Mm. We have had many different problems and dilemmas, one including a cloner willy. <laughs> yes, it was a, a daughter was house sitting for her parents who went on holiday, looked under the parents' bed, already a red flag, found a shoebox, 
found the dildo, had a nice time, weird, <gasps> because it's your parent, like, mm, and then thought, that's phenomenal, had a great time with it, thought, I'll buy one of those, look for a brand name, and on it, it said Cloner Willy. <laughs> and it was cloned. And it was obviously cloned from her dad. Dad. That, I don't think you should share no. those no. things. <laughs> that is I don't worse think than anything either. we've ever covered. I think, you, no. Is that a see true that, crime? It's a crime. I, I feel that violated crime. by it, yeah. Is I, that incest? Yes. Yeah. I'm going to say it's as close as you need to get. Yeah. I'd say not that you need to get. Not that, you no. need to get. <laughs> I should just stress. No. If you're incest curious, that's as close as incest. maybe you should get. Wow. I don't know. Didn't know that was a phrase. Anyway, <laughs> away from Clone of Willy, <laughs> we also do uh, help people with their problems and dilemmas, such as uh, if they've had problems with their diplomatic parking bay at yeah. a high commission. We do proper I like to say that one nice. just for a bit of light and shade. <laughs> um, so it's not all Clone of Willys and sex, because we're not a sex podcast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we get bits like, who should pay for the bill and mm, what, yeah. what, what did we have recently that we both really liked i was like oh this was a good one. Oh, it, yes we had a very good one recently about if you split up with whoever mm. you're dating and there are photos of them on your profile mm. do you delete do you mm. archive do you Dilemma. leave them there particularly probably it's more i guess it becomes more of an issue when you then have someone else that you're sure. dating uh -huh. if you're single you probably it's probably less of a what was the answer taboo. Well, I said just archive, mm. but equally, I don't think you necessarily, if you feel you need to do something, it's better to archive it mm -hmm. rather than delete it. So at least you've got the memory. Mm -hmm. um, but also, they're part of your past, so yeah. you can't rewrite history, yeah. as I'm sure you know mm. full well on your podcast. Mm -hmm. You know, what happened, happened. So Yeah, that's why we have a laptop, so we don't get it wrong. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> well done. We don't have laptops. <laughs> <laughs> so, should we explain how this episode's going to work then? Yes, and whilst you do that, would you like a gin and a bonnet? I've been Desperately waiting for you to So this us. is the drink that we drink. Nice. Yes. I'll let you set this one up. On our podcast, um, we always start with a gin and a bonnet. We, we did it on our very first ever pilot. <laughs> And uh, the idea was we were going to bring in different cocktails every week. Right. And William started us with a gin and a bonnet because um, it was the Queen Mother's favourite drink and the late ooh, late Queen's favourite drink. Um, so we we get pretty squiffy on it. <laughs> and it gets, it's it's really strong. I'm it quite, looks it. Um, dreading it after a stag do, to be fair. <laughs> we were, the, the one we were then, we we're going to do like a Green Hulk cocktail as well, oh. which is... Um, Half a lager, half a WKD. Nice. Yeah, from uni days. Well, thank you so much. There you go. Well, we, we also have a signature red-handed cocktail. We do, which does come from the uni days, actually. Um, yeah, not nearly as refined as this. No, it is right. not. I What's think yours? If we do a follow-up to this, we mm. shall have to host you guys. And, yes. And give you our signature drink. What's the, the spirit? Sig or? The signature drink of the spooky bitches, as Sorry. our followers call themselves. Uh, they call themselves that. We don't call them that. Um, I call them sausage. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> yeah. That's nice. I it's... like being called sassy. That sounds weird. <laughs> <laughs> it is, of course, a turbo wine, oh. which is white wine or Prosecco, if you're feeling fancy, mixed with energy drink. Yep. Oh, oh wow! Yeah. Okay. Cheers. 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 Well, <laughs> I'm excited. To Cheers. the spooky bitches and the Thank G and Divas. Mm -hmm. The spooky bitches and the G and Divas. Mm. Mm. Oh, you know what? That's nicer than I thought it was going to be. It's really nice, but it's lethal. Mm. It gets you really squiffy. What we don't have today is a slice of lemon or orange. Mm. A little bit of a garnish. I was going to say, but yeah, I didn't sorry. want to be rude. Um, <laughs> but it's it's nice. It, 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 obviously, yeah. drink responsibly. It's very, very lethal. I'm going to get hammered. Why do you yeah. come in? Yes. <laughs> oh, you'll fit right in. Yeah. <laughs> Can we do our bit before we get hammered, please? <laughs> yeah. So in the first half of the episode, you're going to treat William and I or is it me and William? No, William and I. Uh, William and me. Mm -hmm. William and me to what you usually get up to in your Did podcast. Did you know that? Yes. It's because if you take out the other name, it should still make sense. So if you're like, treat William and I, but you wouldn't say treat I to, you would say treat me to. So it would be William and me. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Not that you we're... needed that, but I'm just backing you up. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. You, we're, <laughs> cool. I think... I'm feeling that we are more similar. <laughs> And, and you to, yeah, I mean, I don't mean that rudely, <laughs> Hannah. I'm just comparatively. 
<laughs> there is still a bit of a gap. You're more William, you're more Jordan. That's yeah. Uh, and that's so you're going to show us what you do in your podcast. And then in the second half, the tables are turned and we're going to show you what we do in Help I Sex with My Boss. Wonderful. Right. Cheers. Cheers. No clinking, apparently. It's common. No, it's very common. We're not allowed to clink. <laughs> So we know that you guys are not a sex podcast. Mm -hmm. Emphasis, not a sex podcast. We know that you just deal with topics that are sexual in nature. Mm -hmm. So when we talked about this collaboration between Sexted and Red Handed, we put our thinking caps on and we're like, what is the topic that best highlights what we both do oh so well? And we ended up with the idea that it had to be cults. Mm. Because... They certainly fuck people up, which is our speciality. Okay. And it almost always gets very sexual, which although you're not a sex podcast, nope. is kind of sometimes your speciality. Yeah. Okay. There is always that underlying in it. Yeah. It always goes there. So they'll use sex to lure people in and also things that are missing from that would-be cult member's life, be it meaning, family, love, status, or a higher purpose, because everyone's looking for something. Mm. Yeah. And I think one of the misunderstandings about cults, actually, that we have realized after doing years of this is people often think that the people who end up in cults are like kind of like have nothing else going on. Mm. They're sort of like really, um, you know, they are vulnerable people, but that they're sort of dragged in just for the body count. No, no, no. Like cult leaders, because they're so narcissistic and because they want the cult to work, they want to go after people that have something to offer. They, they want to go after people who are smart, who are capable, who are able to deliver. And that's actually why people who are very capable end up in cults because like Hannah said, they're looking for a higher purpose and they feel like it's missing from their lives. And nobody joins a cult on purpose. Mm. Nobody no. knows they're doing it. Yeah. They're just looking for something else like veganism. <laughs> oh. Are you anti-vegan? Desperate. No, I don't know. No. <laughs> um, like it just, it just goes, goes along with their, the sort of new age thinking. I, it I does. Think. Yeah. And it's also something we've learned about cults is the veganism part actually does enter it quite a lot because to um, deprive people of protein means that they're not able to think very clearly. Mm. So mm. that's why cults often feed their members just like gruel and stuff like that. Ooh. Because the more broken down you are, the less protein you have in your diet, the less like resistant you are or the, the less critical thinking you're likely to do. It sounds like oh. boarding school. <laughs> a so, touch. Sounds like a few places I've worked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's so interesting. You no, know, there's, there's a lot. Cult leaders are typically... If you look at their sort of psychological profile, mm. they will be very deeply narcissistic. Mm. I mean, that's not a shock to anybody. No. And basically, typically what they want is to kind of feel like gods on earth, right? They have their following. It's very um, separated from mainstream culture. Um, they've got them typically on a compound or gathered somewhere. And these people are completely beholden to them. One of the things with cults is like, you shouldn't get your information from anyone else except the cult leader. Like oh. we're talking that level of sort of, you know, psychopathology when it comes to cults. And that's exactly what's going on in the case that we've picked to talk about today. Can I ask, do cult leaders know they start a cult? Do they say, I'm going to start a cult or? It's a good question. Generally not. Um, yeah. Generally, you'll see them and the majority that we see and have covered on Red Handed do start off as Christian ministers. Um, mm. And then, particularly in the States, as like evangelical ministers. And then they're like, oh, I quite like this. Everyone's listening to what I'm saying. Mm. And then tithing is a very Christian thing. You're supposed to give 20% depending on which denomination of Christian you are. Mm. So it's already built in within the doctrine. Um, so it gets a bit easy to be like, I, I know I said 20%, but actually mm. everything you've ever owned has yeah. to come straight in. Yeah, I think one of the things we find with cults is, like Hannah said, it's easier to start the cult based on some understanding that people already have. So if it's an existing religion, it's easy. You're asking a smaller leap of people to make um, rather than something completely brand new. Another age of like cults that we saw, especially in the sort of 70s and 80s, was also this kind of Eastern mysticism. So people in the West were getting very jaded with Christianity and what was going on here. So then you had some of these cult leaders who would like take a little trip to India and then they'd come back and they'd be like, I found the answers. It is in Eastern mysticism. And that gave people this feeling of, 
oh, well, maybe this will be the answer to why I feel there's a missing purpose in my life, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Cast off your material possessions and give them to me. Yes. Basically. Don't throw mm. them away. Give yeah. them to me. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, like Hannah said at the start, it's kind of the cult is always there to exploit people. It will be for slave labor or for sex or for money or something. But the people in the cult are always being exploited by this highly narcissistic, psychopathic leader that sits at the front of it. So, yeah. We've got a very interesting case, but okay, uh, we're going to ask you some questions. So this is to understand how much you guys already know about cults. So in 2019, which celebrity alongside his band, 30 Seconds to Mars, started their own cult on a private island off the coast of Croatia? Oh, I interviewed him. Danny. No. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I believe you. <laughs> Danny from McFly. No. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Danny oh. from 30 Seconds to McFly. <laughs> What's he called now? I interviewed him not long ago. Not um, the one that you... Uh, not um, Halsey. No. <laughs> it wasn't Young, <laughs> it wasn't young, young Blood. 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 It, it wasn't Young Blood. That sounds like a cult name, though. It does, it? Yeah. Um, it was... Uh, Quite a famous actor as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. Played oh, uh, he was... Joker. Yes. And Dallas Buyers Club. Yeah. Yes. Don't tell me. He won, he's won an Oscar as well, hasn't he? A, a yeah. few, I think. Uh, 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 Joel, Jed, Jed. Jedward. You're so close. <laughs> it's not Jedward. Oh, why can't I literally? <laughs> no, it's, it's not. Uh, Go on, tell us. Oh, don't. It's going to It's a very me. American first name. What's it begin with? J. You're very right. You're so really. close. Oh, what's it called? Jed. Gerard. So Sat I'm going to give it to you. That's so close. It's Jared Leto. Jared Leto. Jared Leto. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. So yes, it is true. If you um, give it but a quick Google, you will see that there is a lot of pictures of this island. I think they've called it Mars Island, the right. private island off the coast of Croatia where they are. And to be clear, because, you know, we don't want to get anybody sued or anything. Mm. Jared Leto has never officially commented on this group. He's never acknowledged it. He's never said anything, but he's definitely there. And um, <laughs> not sure allegedly, how that stands up legally. The, <laughs> yeah. There's pictures. Um, so yeah, the group, dressed as Jesus. <laughs> yeah, it's dressed as Jesus. He does look a bit biblical, doesn't and he? He's on really purpose. leaning mm. into it. So the group call themselves the Echelon. Okay. The group. I'm saying they're a cult, but looks like a cult. In our episode about cults. <laughs> but there are, like Hannah said, there's plenty of pictures of Jared Leto on this island, dressed very much like Jesus Christ Superstar, while hordes of people also wearing long white robes are swooning over him. That's the only way to describe it. Like they're trying desperately to touch him. It's all very weird. And if you actually check out the hashtag, hashtag Mars Island, there is an official post on there with the caption, quote, yes, this is a cult. So, don't know, don't know. Okay. Maybe it's a bit too on the nose. There are people on the internet who say this is just a publicity stunt, and maybe that's true. But do the people who are there know that? I don't know. Oh. I don't know if they know that part we of We went to Benidorm stunt. last year for <laughs> an episode. Maybe next year we could go to Mars, Mars Island. Island. <laughs> Should we do a live recording? Because you know old Jared. If you'd have said to me, of all the people you've mm. ever interviewed, who do you think would start a cult? Mm. It probably would have been him. Oh, that's good to yeah. know. Mm. Okay. Maybe we should infiltrate. Maybe we should go and pretend to join the cult. Yes. And then make a little... No, because that's how they get you and then you start believing it. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think I would if I'm William, honest. we can deprogram them. We can yeah. I wouldn't fall for this cult business. Mm. If anyone's joining a cult, it's not me. Okay. Or William. No. <laughs> it's you two, basically, is what we mean. I'm just looking for a higher purpose. <laughs> yes. We'll be there. We are shaved dads. Right, next question. Uh, Charles Manson was the infamous leader of the Manson family. Um, but... A member of which wildly successful 60s band briefly fell in with the Manson family in 68? I know this as well. Was it one of the Nolans? No. <laughs> no? Good guess, though. Is it, was this the Kool-Aid one? No, mm -hmm. that's Jonestown. Oh, and okay. it was Flavor Aid, but go on. Uh, it was a female, was it? Mm -mm. Uh, no, I was thinking... Oh. A 60s... What? Nationality, American. American. Hmm. I don't know. I, I thought it was. I was going to say Stevie Nicks, but that wasn't Stevie Nicks, and that was the seventies and eighties. It's a man. We'll give you that clue. Um, six. Can you sing one of their tunes? Mm. Hum it. Hannah. Um, oh. I can. Uh, da 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 da. It's like they're here. <laughs> um, 
Tony Christie? No. <laughs> <laughs> yes, imagine. This is the <laughs> way <laughs> to call Torello. Amarillo. Amarillo. Yeah. I was trying to be funny. It was oh, a, I see. It was a Sorry. cult joke, guys. You did a joke. <laughs> you did a joke. <laughs> um, <laughs> cheers. You could at least pretend to laugh. Okay, good Should vibrations. Should we edit That's one off in? Oh, yes. I've what? seen the film. Uh... Uh, Beach Boys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What's he called? Oh, Tony Wilson. No. Yes. I thought he said Tony, but he didn't. I said Tony Wilson. Wait, it was Dennis Wilson. I thought he Dennis said Denny. Wilson. Dennis Wilson. <gasps> Dennis the drummer. Film. Have you seen that film? Oh, no, it wasn't the drummer. I'm thinking of the main guy, but anyway. Ah, uh, okay. No, it was the drummer. Yeah. Uh, wow. And he uh, met Manson in 68 and then moved in with him and the family for a bit and then they all got gonorrhea. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> to be fair, it's something like around. fresh as week at uni. Isn't it? <laughs> something like fresh as at uni. It someone, is. Uh, you can cut this if you think it's gross, but someone, um, a friend of mine, um, received a text the other day um, from a lady of questionable affection that said, I've got the gone gone, you should get tested. Gone gone. <laughs> oh. Brilliant. Oh. Wow. Yes, how childish. I love that. Why are we infantilizing gonorrhea? What are we yeah. going to do? Oh, wow. Anyway, he let them move into his like million dollar house and they all just yeah, yeah. got the gone gone and um <laughs> taking loads of drugs and then he couldn't get them out so he just left he and then like, i think manson like showed up at a different house with a bullet with his name and uh. with dennis written on it as like a threat yeah yeah bad news wow. bad news the um, Beach Boys. yes <laughs> you'd never think it would you no all right question three final question chance for glory Joaquin Phoenix, River Phoenix, and Rose McGowan were all born into and raised in which cult? It had a really weird name, but I can't remember it. What was it? It's very, if you don't know, it's very hard to, you're not going to guess this one. Should we just tell you? Yes, tell us. So the cult was called the Children of God cult. And Hannah and I have been doing this, as we said, for an unspecified number of many years. And we've done a lot of cults in that time. And this is probably the most messed up cult to ever have existed in what way we we debated this right we don't want to bring the whole vibe down on sexted um so hannah is currently actually researching and writing our yeah imminent episode that is i believe going out next week the week after this is released on our on red-handed but how much do you really want to know because people like tell me i want to know but i'm like do you they, really want on a scale of normal to clone a willy it's it's past oh, clone it's way clone. beyond clone. It's past really clone like like way, way Though beyond. kind of quite I mean in a similar vein. In a similar vein. It's it's really, really horrible stuff. We can tell you what flirty fishing is. The flirty fishing side of it, I wouldn't say it's fun, but it's less damaging. Yeah. So, hookers for Christ is what yes, they would call Yes, hookers for Christ. Yeah. So basically what the cult did was very purposefully attract in very attractive young people, men and women. Mm -hmm. And then they would use them to go out onto the streets and basically, uh, and like clubs and bars and whatever, and lure in potential new recruits. They would also take ballroom dancing lessons specifically to go into upper... Upper echelons upper of society. Places, yeah. And Ooh, I'm watch yes. strictly with a different eye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it was it was basically, yeah, hook us for Christ. It was basically the the cult being like, your bait go do some flirty fishing and, and bring some and they sort of pro, well not procreate but attempt to procreate oh yes yeah. and they if they work because that's how you grow a cult and they called them Jesus babies mm-hmm. because Jesus has used the man as a tool to deliver the baby to the cult so they could grow mm. their numbers yes okay wow yeah well, it all goes on. Yes. <laughs> this is why I just keep myself to myself yeah <laughs> If anyone comes up to you and tries to ballroom dance with you, Jordan, don't no, do it. Because genuinely, I could so, and we all know it, and you know it, I could so easily be tied into a cult currently. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know, I could easily. You, I, you, Jordan, so Jordan can't say no to people. Yeah. So you only would have to be a flirty fish or something <laughs> and start. Sort of just, and Jordan would just say yes to go along with it, just to be nice is because, it because he is you don't lovely. Upset people. Yes. Yeah. He hates confrontation, mm. so he wouldn't say no. This is a load of hokum. Go <laughs> away. He would be like, "All oh, right, yeah, sounds <laughs> nice, yeah." That literally what I'd, yeah, I'd be a cult stream. Oh no! Yeah. Don't tell them. Shh. Oh god, this is. Yeah. You've told them now. This is why I just go home and watch telly. Uh, how familiar are you with the concept of a twin flame? Is William my twin flame? <laughs> I don't even know what a twin flame is, but I think I know I'm not. <laughs> As we're holding hands, tell us what it is. 
<laughs> it's uh, the idea that you, uh, you're one soul in two separate bodies and then you are drawn to each other throughout your life. Yeah. Oh, well, to be fine. the I ultimate thought... harmonious union. Jordan's my twin asshole. That's <laughs> probably more... <laughs> That's more what I'd say. Okay, Twin Flame sounds quite yeah. nice. So you're sharing a soul and you can't possibly be apart and you mm -hmm. find each other, but somehow it is someone in the same country as oh. you and not in a village near a tree. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's, is it good? Because we're just friends. I want to put that. Like, yeah. yeah. Is it twin Flame is sexual. Yeah, it is. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I wanted to let you guys, you know. Okay. I didn't want to I didn't yeah. block <laughs> the, the love that was going on here. Um, so yeah, basically the, the idea is if you meet your twin flame, you will supposedly feel an incredibly intense connection to this person because you are essentially two halves of the same whole. You share a soul. And this twin flame would be your perfect lover and would be the person that would change the entire course of your life forever. Well, Jordan has pretty much changed my life. <laughs> So Tick maybe there's so something far. in this. Tick so you do far. have to do the sex stuff, you though. Do. That's quite a bit big. That's part. a big part of it, yes. Um, we went to Monaco together once and shared a bed. <laughs> <laughs> Refusing to hold his hand. <laughs> not even looking. <laughs> Didn't we, darling? But this, in Monaco. But this... You got the sex kit out the box. <laughs> yeah, because we was in a posh hotel and he had a sex kit. And I was uh, like, yeah. <gasps> Yeah. Once um, Saru and I were on holiday in Romania in a very like yeah. haunted feeling Airbnb mm -hmm. and we had separate bedrooms, but we were convinced that we were just going to wake up and see someone standing in the doorway. So we'd be like, should we just sleep in here? Yeah. To yeah. Well, fair we'll enough. Just, yeah. Let's just go downstairs and make tea together and then come back and go to bed together. <laughs> yes. I'm not sleeping in my separate room. Yeah. No, but uh, Jordan's reluctance to hold your hand, William. He put mean, his hand out to me he first. Did first. Now I'm feeling some, some negative oh, vibes. Like you. But mm. what I do have to say, that doesn't mean he's not your twin flame. In fact, he's it could be a too sign much. that he is. Because twin flames are not the same thing as soulmates. Now, soulmates is obviously a term we're more familiar yeah. with in the mainstream. Now, it might sound a bit arbitrary, the fact that I'm saying twin flames and soulmates are different. But it actually becomes a really, really important part of how this cult managed to run their con. Like it's a very important distinction between the two of them that we're going to come back to. And the cult we're talking about today is called the Twin Flames Universe. Ooh. As people, as human beings, we're fascinated by sex, we're fascinated by relationships, all of that good stuff. But I also think it's probably not a reach to say that maybe a lot of people have never been lonelier than they've ever been today so that idea that a perfect person exists mm. for you somewhere out there and you just need to find them and then everything will be great makes sense as to why there is this huge like spike in interest and that's exactly what the two main characters at the heart of our story today knew and they are called jeff and shalia divine Mm -hmm. Except they're not. They're not really. Oh. Um, their real names are Jeff Ian and Megan Plant. But to, for the purposes of this story, we shall be calling them Jeff and Shalia Divine. And okay. they got together in 2013. So Megan, I don't like calling them by their chosen names. Sh so we're going to stick with Megan and Jeff? No, because no, it's going to be confusing. Shalia Divine. <laughs> <laughs> so she was a, a spiritual freewheeler doing readings and healings for people online. Always a red flag. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, and Jeff was even worse because he was a business school graduate, which is even more boring than being mm. a spiritual healer online. Um, and he just wanted to be really, really rich. And they quickly realized that promising to cure people's cancer with their spiritual mumbo jumbo was not going to pan out. If people didn't get better, then nobody was going to keep paying them. Mm. So instead, they moved on to what we all want, which is love. And they started what they called the TFU, which is the Twin Flames Universe. Yeah. So this is where we're getting into that cultish behavior so basically they start making youtube videos telling everybody about twin flames so educating the the wider public about what twin flames are and also telling everybody that they are each other's twin flames mm. and they also say in a lot of their videos that they have been in harmonious union for years now in case you're wondering what that is it's basically the equivalent of like having reached enlightenment in this particular area you having met your twin flame and coexisting with them in harmonious union is the equivalent of having reached enlightenment. It is the highest form of like being that you can exist in. And they're like, we've done it. And because they've ascended to this level, they say that they are now blessed with the gifts of recognizing your twin flames and also being able to confirm it. Oh. 
So the mm. key thing is that they make it very clear that you cannot find your twin flame without their help. Oh, it's quite clever, isn't and it? And it's really whoever you turn up with going, I think Jordan is my twin flame. They're just going to go, we'll take your money. Yes. Or they're going to go, we found one for you. Yeah. Oh, Here's one yes. I prepared yes, earlier. Yes, yes. Or would they say, this isn't, but stick with us and we'll find them. Yes, you. because exactly that, typically yeah. people didn't come with somebody that they thought was their twin flame. The oh. people who were drawn to this were people who were lonely, who hadn't met somebody mm. yet. And they were like, Jeff and Shalia are there saying, we'll help you identify and find your twin flame. So people come there solo, hoping that they will help them match make. And um, this is where that key difference, Jordan, that you were interested in comes in, that difference between a twin flame connection and a soulmate okay. connection. And this is very important because it comes in very handy for the divines. Okay. So a soulmate is someone who's you're naturally compatible with, that you get on well, there's chemistry, you're happy, you're fulfilled, definitely fucking each other. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's easy. But a twin flame, you don't necessarily have a guaranteed smooth connection. They call them blocks. So just because you're in a harmonious union doesn't mean you never fight or like get a restraining order, which is a key plot point. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Because the the uh, connection is so intense, your twin flame will bring up all of the issues that you need to deal with. And they do this thing called mirror work, right? So if you're like, oh, I'm I'm upset because this person has rejected me what you would do in the Twin Flames universe is say, I'm upset because I have rejected myself. Okay. And then you look inward and then clean out your soul that way, which is not a million miles away from stuff that a therapist would we're, tell you We're to gonna do. make you guys do the mirror exercise later. <laughs> Don't worry about Ooh, it. Oh, lovely. <laughs> Get the lube. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the key there's thing- There's none left. <laughs> there's none left, it's all in the globe. <laughs> So the key thing is that the connection with your twin flame is going to be difficult. That's part of the whole mm. problem. And to make it work, you have to do major personal healing. But you have to make it work because once you've done that and reached harmonious union, it's the very best love out there in the universe. And these two people are going to be able to give it to you. And you will never, ever find anyone better because it just doesn't exist. Wow. Yeah. How harmonious are your unions currently? We're well, just friends. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I I have a husband. It's, fa yeah. it's fairly harmonious. harmonious. From time to time, we have our flare-ups, but which which couple doesn't? Yeah. So right. So it's a it's not a soulmate. It's deeper than a soulmate. Yeah. They're it's saying like, it's it's better than a soulmate. It's like it's, a spicy soulmate. Yeah. And it's but and when you meet this person, it's like phenomenally. But is that the right word? Hmm? Yeah. Like but, it's just next level love but not necessarily easy so what they're saying is if you meet your soulmate it will be easy it'll be like com you'll be compatible you'll get on great you'll have you know minimal problems no more than an ordinary couple does but you're settling for less if you settle for your soulmate because you're taking the easy road okay. what you want to do is meet your twin flame who is essentially your other half of your soul okay. but with that person be warned, it's going to be a much rougher road. So a few blocks. It's going to be really challenging. They're going to bring up all this stuff in you that you have to deal with. But if you deal with it, then you will reach a higher level of being, which is this harmonious union. Okay. And as you can see, already that's becoming very convenient for them. Because crucially, with the twin flame... Um, sometimes you can seem like a really unlikely pair. So there might be, for example, a large age gap between these twin flames. There might be big differences in backgrounds or a total lack of any sort of physical attraction. But they are your person, according to Jeff and Shalia. Now, Jeff and Shalia, if you watch any of their YouTube um, like videos, they preach these points nonstop. And they tell their followers, if you don't like the person that we say is your twin flame, so what? They are your twin flame. They aren't your soulmate. Twin flame relationships will be hard and you might not even like them, let alone love them. You might not even want to be anywhere near them, let mm. alone have sex with them. But you have to find the inner strength, resilience and gratitude. And these are quotes taken from them to make it work. How very convenient. Yeah, it sounds a touch sort of. Can I say this? Rapey adjacent? Yes. Yes. A hundred percent. It's very icky. It's very. It's like just being like you, William, don't care about any of your preferences, any of your attractions, anything that you want in a person. It's this person. And if you can't make it work with that person, it's your fault. Not because we've 
I mean, it would Done be funny if I was there and they were like, hello, <laughs> this is Stephanie. <laughs> She's your twin flame. Yeah. Regardless of whatever, I'd be like, well, I've got one or two things to say. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a lot of that. And it's just basically mumbo jumbo they've made up. Yes. Yeah. If we tell you, Jordan, that your twin flame is your colleague, I'm not saying it's William, a colleague, and that person is like, I don't like you. Please stop telling me that I'm your twin flame. I don't know what you're talking about. Because the person they point you to may not be in the cult. They mm -hmm. could just be a random person they say is your twin flame. And you keep going up to that person saying, no, I really think we should be together. And that person like, please leave me alone. Jeff and Shalira are basically telling them, do not take no for an answer. Oh, that's so So bad. this is where we become mm. ever more rapey adjacent. Yeah. That's so bad. Mm -hmm. So essentially, they're teaching TFU students a lot about how to manipulate people, uh, how to stalk people, and also just boundary crossing. Just never, ever, ever stopping. And all of those actions were widely celebrated by the cult because it showed a dedicated student of TFU trying hard to make their love work. So showing up at someone's house in the middle of the night, mm -hmm. leaving a photo album under their car. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's just being a stalker. Mm. It is. But in the cult, it is, uh, it's being someone who's really committed, someone who's really committed to the cause. So they'll be hel heralded sort of amongst the rest of the students as being someone who's really, look how dedicated this person is. You should all aspire to be as committed to making it work with your twin flame as Jordan is. Mm. And so you're kind of getting positive reinforcement for doing something that is so terrible. So it gets very messed up in people's heads. So while their students' lives are very much falling apart because they're getting arrested, they're getting restraining orders set against them, all this kind of stuff, and in some cases even moving across the country to move in and live with somebody that they do not know, and doing this based on nothing more than the word of their leaders. Now, Jeff and Shalia, while all this is going on, are enjoying their millions and millions and millions of dollars because by this point they are absolutely raking it in. But how are they profiting off this scam? I hear you scream. Yes. Mm. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> and they don't hide it either. Like one of the first um, YouTube videos that if you search them, which comes up is them uh, in their $100,000 car. Oh, right. Um, would you say Porsche or Porsche, William? Um, well, they're both vulgar. But I would say... <laughs> Porsche. You would say, I would say Porsche as well. But I believe it is Porsche. Anyway, so how are they making money was the question. And the answer is the Twin Flame Ascension School. So now we're going to tell you how much money they were making oh. off each person. Um, so the pair started to sell online classes on how people could find their Twin Claim. And those classes cost $222, angel number, a month. Mm. And then people were forced into signing up for a year at a time. And uh, yes, it's a lot of money, but it's true love. And can you put a price on it? Apparently, yes. And it's two hundred and twenty-two dollars yes, yeah. a month. <laughs> wow. Jeff and Shalia, they're running these classes. They're charging all this money. And you might be wondering, like, what are they actually teaching? One thing that seems to be repeatedly shoved down everybody's throat and seems to be pretty much the only thing that they talk about quite a lot of the time is this mirror exercise. So for all of your problems, if you're ever having an issue with your twin flame, if you're ever having a problem like you get arrested and put in prison because you've been stalking your twin flame, do the mirror exercise. And it goes like this. Basically, they tell you to say a sentence about a time that another person made you feel negatively. For example, I am blank at blank for blanking me. So, William, do you want to give us an example of this? How long have you got? <laughs> <laughs> no. I, and does it have to be a negative? Yes, it does have to be oh. a negative, yes. So it's the negative action, how it made you feel in the person. Oh, I am incensed <laughs> that Jordan didn't read my message on WhatsApp. Okay. Oh, is it? I didn't follow you back on TikTok. <laughs> oh, yes, I'll do that. I'll do that. I'll do that. I am going to do that. It's getting a bit petty now. I'm yeah. doing it as like a... <laughs> I am incensed that Jordan didn't follow me back on TikTok. Okay, good. Now we have to do the mirror exercise. Mm -hmm. So, William, you need to say the sentence again, but reversing it and aiming it at yourself. Okay. <laughs> I am cross that I did not follow myself back on TikTok, <laughs> even though I don't think that's technically possible. Feel anything? Feel better? Oh, it's so much better. Good. <laughs> Unburdened. <laughs> Unburdened. Yes. Good, good. Closer to your not twin flame? So much closer. I mean, I can't message him on TikTok, <laughs> but I'm closer than that. Um, and apparently, 
that exercise is all hundreds of people and all over the world needed. And that's what you pay for? Yes. That, that is $220 a month, please. Well, that's ridiculous. But it's a big part of it. Is it like a form of gaslighting? No. I mean, no. I don't know what it is. I feel like they're borrowing from like maybe some reframing ideas. So yeah, but it's like it's you're only going to be upset if someone calls you fat on Instagram if you already think you're fat. Like, do you mm. know what I mean? Uh, that kind of okay. So it's like it's I guess in some way it's like it's not that somebody else is making you feel that way. It's because you're making yourself feel that way. But that's all they have. That's all they have. This is what every single one of their followers just repeats endlessly. It seems to be the only thing they've learned from the entire TFU student environment and then so if you find your twin flame within the program you're encouraged to post as many pictures mm -hmm. as humanly possible on every form of social media um in these facebook groups that are hundreds of thousands of people mm. big and then jeff and shalia can use that be like don't you want it all yeah you can have this and then uh those people who are posting, they start getting classes for free. Mm. Uh, and then it started to grow because people do want to be happy and people do want to be in love. Um, so Jeff and Shalia started hosting regular online group sessions with hundreds of people joining over Zoom and doing regular meetups as well. And slowly they took over their students' lives. Do you think a lot of cults thrived during lockdown? I was thinking about that this morning um, because it is very because it's a lot of their classes happen on Zoom and it's all YouTube videos and stuff, it did feel very lockdown-y. Mm. And I think that that is when we saw loneliness become the epidemic that it is now. Mm. Um, because I think everyone's mental health was under a microscope for two years uh, and we haven't really done anything about it. Mm. Um, so I, I wonder, yeah, because maybe instead of making banana bread, you're like, I actually want to ascend. And then you end up in some tricky situations. And you get a lot of time to think and do nothing. Well, mm -hmm. and that's... For me personally, the worst possible scenario. Exactly. It's always dangerous. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and yeah, there's also that kind of underlying thing of like, well, what are you doing with this time to make yourself better? Like mm -hmm. that self-help, self-improvement, which again, they're really tapping into that well-being, self-help, um, make yourself a better person, heal, like pseudo-therapy stuff, like all of, even this mirror exercise, it, it feels very like they're, they've hijacked it from somewhere else and they're co-opting it for their own purposes. So yeah, another very cultish thing that they start to do at this point is they start to tell all of their students and followers that they have to cut off any family and friends who might challenge the teachings of the cult. Jesus. Now this kind of isolation is really, really important if you're gonna have a cult. If you're gonna have a cult, you can't allow your cult members to be getting um, advice, influence, mm. information, um, or allowing other people outside, like externally to the cult, to challenge what you're telling these people. It has to be like a funnel of information that you're just feeding these people and no one else is allowed to come near it. So they start telling everybody, you know, if family members or friends or loved ones in your life start to say, oh, this sounds a bit weird. I really don't think that person is a good match for you. This sounds like a cult. Cut them off because mm. they're not your real family. They're not really people who love you. We are that. And they start talking about things like a soul family. Um, so it's expanding beyond just that romantic partner. It's the cult wanting to take over in every possible way uh, for their people's lives. It's also what Scientology do. If anyone uh, is challenging your Scientological beliefs, they're, you're an SP, they're a suppressive person. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And here the phrase they use is, anyone who challenges what the group is telling you is just trying to dull your vibration. Mm. So they're holding you back. You don't want to have those people in your life. They're also not keeping a secret that they're making all of this money. I said they've got their Porsche or Porsche or whatever. Um, and their enormous house with a water slide. And they're filming all of this. A real like camcorder cult situation. Showing it to all of their followers. Saying you could have this. Um, and the way you have more stuff and money is by not paying taxes. And who doesn't pay taxes? Religion. Exactly. Bingo. I see. So Jeff had the bright idea to register an arm of his MLM as a religion, so he, as a tax dodge. Um, and he called it the Church of the Union, which ba means basically nothing. <laughs> like Scientology doesn't really mean anything. No, a bit of a nothing word. It's the study of studying. <laughs> mm. But Jeff does what we were talking about at the start. He, he starts it as a church. He starts to affiliate himself very strongly with um, a Christian aesthetic, let's say. And then he starts to outright call himself Jesus Christ. So he's like a European looking guy with long brown hair and blue eyes. So he's saying that like, and he says this, like Jesus, the first Jesus, obviously, Middle Eastern Jewish mm. guy. He didn't actually look like this, but I do. 
I'm the second round. So they're predicting me. Yeah. And it's it's a big thing he has. And it shows his sort of level of narcissism. He's not just saying that he's somebody who has all the answers. He's literally saying, I am Jesus Christ. Wow. And Shalia, she likes to say, I'm banging the Christ. That's one of her favorite things to say. How classy. Mm, <laughs> yes, I mean, you is. would though if you were. <laughs> them, you? you would. It is, if you really believed it, it is yeah. quite a quite a brag, isn't it? If you really want, yeah. thought that that was true. How much he really thinks it's true and how much Jeff really thinks he's Jesus, I don't know. They don't come across to me as delusional because I don't think you could successfully run the scam that they do if you were genuinely like completely mm. delusional and out of your tree. I think it's just part of the thing because he's like, I can get away with it. I can say I'm Jesus and these people are believing it because one of the things in this is that anyone who rejects it, because a few people in the cult, like maybe he's going a bit far now. Maybe him saying he's literally Jesus Christ is a bit too big of a step for me. Jeff and Shalia would just say, oh, you've got a block. You've got a block and you need to buy more classes to get rid of your block because if you don't believe I'm Jesus, then what are you mm -hmm. even doing here? So it kind of just, whatever they say, you can't argue with it. There's always a dead end. Then in 2020, a Vice article was released about TFU. And some of the members who had woken up to what was going on after the whole Jesus Christ revelation had gone to Vice and given interviews about what was really going on. And obviously, Jeff wasn't going to go down with a fight. He just turns around, sues Vice and calls everybody who left haters. That's his favorite thing to say. And honestly, after this, it just kind of gets weirder and weirder. And you see this with cults. They sort of start to devolve. The, the, the more power crazy the cult leader becomes, they'll start to devolve. It's very depressing. The power of love. <laughs> Thank you for educating us on cults you're, you're welcome. very welcome thank you for being such wonderful listeners well no thank you maybe we'll have some some listener letters about cults in this in this second part <laughs> after these messages do i do a joke of the week no you don't do a joke of the week. <laughs> <laughs> and welcome back now it's time for red-handed to go sexted with questions and dilemmas from our g and divas our listeners um we have no idea what is coming up. Like, you have no idea what yeah. I'm about to read out. Um, so we will start with this letter from Juau. Dear William Jordan and the Red Handed Crew, I'm friends with a lovely group of very classy middle class people in their late 60s. I'm in my early 30s, for your reference. Their manners are impeccable. Or so I thought. We were all at a party together when my friends decided to leave. I followed suit, not wanting to stay alone. However, to my surprise, they did not look for the host to say goodbye. When I asked if we should do so, they said it was terrible manners to disrupt a host to bid farewell. The correct attitude would be just to exit the party and send a thank you note or text the day after. <laughs> this was completely new to me. I've always been taught that it's impolite to leave a party without thanking the host in person. What is the correct etiquette in this case? Should I adopt this advice and start doing Irish exits? <laughs> Many thanks, Joao. I thought it was called a French exit. I, yeah, it's called both. Or a backdoor <laughs> boogie. Or a what? <laughs> a backdoor boogie. I call it the okay. trapdoor. Trapdoor. The trapdoor. Do you do it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I love do. it. You back door boogies, you just go out the back, you dance out. <laughs> you I read something the other day that if you do the Irish exit pretty consistently, you save like two years of your life. Yeah. Right. Because <laughs> of all the friends that you lose <laughs> along the way. I think at a dinner party it's different if you're all right. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm not going to get up yes. from the table. <laughs> yeah. But at a party, I think it's perfectly fine. I wouldn't mind if someone did it to me. Yeah, I, I don't even send thank you notes. No, <gasps> no, no, no. Oh dear. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, well, thank you for listening to this episode. <laughs> on the said stag do, I, I left them all to it most nights. I was like, I'm off now. <laughs> you yeah. did you did it when we went to Benidorm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to do it at the airport, but alas. Um, what would you do? I What's your advice for you? I personally wouldn't feel offended if somebody left my party without saying goodbye to me, but I would feel compelled to say goodbye to them if I left their party but it depends on how drunk I am yeah. okay. to be perfectly honest but they do take ages to say goodbye now don't they <laughs> I, I think at a, at a wedding you can't say where there's obviously comparatively more you just need to say mm -hmm. goodbye to the couple getting married yes. and maybe the, the the immediate parents mm -hmm. of the couple getting married presuming they are there and present other than that mm -hmm. That's fine. You don't need to go around saying goodbye. No. But I would say from an etiquette point of view, you should say goodbye to the host and the co-host at a party. Okay. All right. And I'm surprised that Joao's friends who are older didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. So, 
Shocking. Um, it's not just the younger generations. <laughs> um, this is from John. Uh, Hello, everyone. I was in a work WhatsApp group chat full of filth and jokes. Some so cringy they might even make members of the North clan blush. <laughs> But recently I've noticed the chat has been very quiet. Nobody has re been replying to my messages. So last week I decided to investigate. It was only after looking at the group I realised what had happened. Everyone, bar myself and another, had left en masse on the same day a month before and hadn't said anything. I was still messaging throughout that month, none the wiser, as no messages or alerts had come up saying everyone had left. I was a bit hurt and embarrassed when I finally noticed and now have no idea how to approach the situation and it's been over a month. So what's the etiquette for leaving a group chat? Should you give a reason before you leave so people know or is it acceptable to ditch as a big group without warning? Love you guys. From John. Oh, that's a very modern problem. I think it depends on the group, is what I'm going to say. Mm -hmm. If it was like for a stag, stag's done now. All the jokes post stag have been made. When's a time to retire the group? Yeah. When can you leave the group? But if it's like a friend group mm. that's just an ongoing one, leaving's a bit. Yeah. A bit it, sus. It does always look rude when it says so and so's left the group, yeah. doesn't it? I yeah. think you don't leave the group. You make another group excluding the people you don't want in the new one. I think mm. that's polite. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we, I, I'm part, well, I was part of one called, called mates like M8S and now it's M12s because everyone's broken up with everyone else. Like yeah. I made a new one. <laughs> so we've had several iterations of the mm. same group. And the first, the first one to uh, get excluded was called Jack. So we do call it getting jacked. Right. Um, but yes. yeah. You archive the group. And start a new one. Um, See, I sure. don't like archiving mm. because I are. Am I going to? Yeah, I archive my. I archive my mum, so I can choose when sure, I can sure, read sure, sure. what she's saying. Oh wow! Um, so if I see the little one, yeah. I'm like, oh my god, it's her. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so I don't tend to yeah. archive. I'll just delete the chat. Oh, I've got like twelve archive. That's very stressful. What yes. is archive? Is it you just like like. Your you archive. You put, <laughs> it, <laughs> you put it into it. a. You put uh, it into a separate bit where. You don't get the notifications anymore. Oh, okay. What but you, you do get a little... It one. tells you if one, there's one two, in the archive. Three, yeah, or, yeah. Yeah. or okay. however many messages. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would say to, to John here that... It sounds like... It, the song's like, it's so cringy they might even make members of the North Clan blush. Are you missing anything, John? Mm. Does it really matter? Mm. I I say to a lot of people, I don't do WhatsApp groups. No. So you should always do that if you can, because there's too many yeah. and they're very stressful. They are. They and are a lot of stressful. them could get you cancelled. Um, yeah. Uh, yes. That's Maybe that's why everybody left. Yeah. Was everyone he was in a group with a public figure? We mm. need to know more. It we does, need to know more. It does more. sound a bit personal. It does sound a bit <laughs> personal, doesn't it? So maybe the problem is you, John. Yes. Yeah. I think the fact that they all left on the same day does sound calculated. Feels, yes. John, it's possibly something you've said. Mm, just uh, yeah, kind of learn from that experience. Maybe it's an opportunity for growth for him there. Yeah. Mm. He can look back at the last comment he made yeah. and wonder why everybody left. I agree. And do the mirror exercise. Exactly. Yes. Maybe they've all gone to join a cult. <laughs> Uh, this final one is from Alfie, dear William and Jordan and team. It was my birthday recently and to celebrate, my mum took me out for a wimpy lunch. Would you like to explain what that is, Jordan? A, a wimpy is a burger restaurant that was very big in the 80s, 90s. It was my mum and dad's first date. Was it? They went to a wimpy. Nice. Yeah. She asked if I did anything nice. I can't believe there's still a few around. There yeah. was one in my hometown until I want to say 2013. Yeah. Right. Mm. So it's okay. I used to go when I was a kid. Lovely. She asked if I did anything nice and I decided it was the right time to tell her about my boyfriend. We got to the Wimpy and my mum asked me while in the restaurant, have you had sex with him yet? Okay. That's a bit, a bit well. much. Obviously, I said yes, as you never lie to your mother. I then went into detail about our escapades and that he lasted three hours the last time we did the deed. That sounds horrible. That's... That sounds absolutely awful. Yeah. She then said to me, me and your dad don't even last 45 minutes, yet alone three hours. 45 minutes? This That's was followed by an in-depth discussion. Is it wrong that I tell my mum about my sex life? Yes. And what would you do if your mum told you about theirs? Yours faithfully. Archiver. Wrong use of yours faithfully. <laughs> Alfie. But, I mean, that's, let's not worry about that too much. Oh, my God. Wow. I mean... Yeah, I, I mean, it sounds like you and your mum are pretty comfortable with it, Alfie, but I reckon the majority of people would not enjoy no. discussing their sex life with 
No. I don't think it's any of your parents' business. No. No. What's poss- what is there to, to be gained? Happy. What is there to be gained by talking to your parents about sex? And look, it sounds like a, a, a same-sex relationship, so it's not like, you know, your mum's probably going to have a bit of advice. Yeah, exactly. You're right. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> Yeah. And I don't, but she's doing something. If mm. at whatever age she is, that she's got a son that's old enough to be talking to her about sex, her and her partner still last forty-five minutes. That's quite a long time. That's though. a long time. Yeah, I mean, my advice there is probably try to avoid talking about your sex life with yes. your parents. Mm. It's a bit weird. I Stop. don't think your new partner would enjoy it. Either. No, no, no. Because no. at some point he might meet them, mm. and does he does he need to go in with the knowledge that your mum knows about your sex life? I think it's not really setting him up for success. I think some things are best left kept private. I would yeah. agree. So stop it, Alfie. Yeah. Thank, there we go. You've been you told. Gave you really good advice there. <laughs> so there we go. That was sexted and red-handed. <laughs> Ying and yang. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks sex so much. Sex drive and cults. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks so much for coming on, guys. Thank you so much really, for having us. Really thank you for having. Well, thank so. you for having us. We've all sort of had each other. Had each as other. It were. There you go. That and it's wrong. lasted almost three hours. So <laughs> thank you so much. No, we never. We don't get to do many collabs, especially with British shows. Actually, we don't have that many British pod connections. So it's been really nice to meet you both, and thank you for Lovely having us. Lovely to meet you, and we'll see you on that island with Jared Leto. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> for all the group trip. Sexed and red-handed, everyone. Yeah. Woo! Thanks, guys.